What's going on YouTube? In this video, we're going to be going over some things you need to be looking for when starting out on TCG, buying collections and things of that nature. Um, so I showed my first month on TCG or talked about it before, um, but this one's going to be more along the lines of things that you're going to want to uh, look out for and get prepared for when they do happen. So it's going to be three quick things. Um, if you want to check anything I use for my shipping, selling, any of that, it'll be in the description below. Uh, I'm always updating that, and if you look at any of the items I use and you know of something better to use, let me know, and I will definitely try and check it out and see how well it works. Um, so, for me, when I first started selling, the things I was selling were in my collection. So, um, you know, I had a couple good cards for stronger decks, like Dockside Extortionist and all of that. Um, those I've actually kept on to right now, held on to because they haven't been declining or been reprinted. Um, but things I did sell were like Ancient Copper Dragon and Shieldred. Um, I had three Shieldred pulled, all three, and one was the, uh, Phyrexian foil, whatever, those oil slick ones. Um, so I sold those off and things of that nature. Sold off some higher dollar cards, um, to help me get my TCG started and go from there. So, first you're going to want to start with your own collection. And you need to be checking your collection for, is it Near Mint, LP, Moderately played, heavy, damaged, whatever. Um, personally, I don't list anything that is not... Well, I will clarify on this. Near Mint or LP is 99.9% .9 of my inventory. Um, I will post LP stuff if it is over a $10 card and it's not damaged or it, like heavily played. If I look at it and I think that it's not... Of course, not Near Mint... It's on the edge of LP that I would, if I got it in, I would not say anything about it. Um, I will drop it down. Um, especially the card was like a $10.50 card. Dropping it to moderately played, um, uh, dropped it to $9.75. Cool. I would prefer to drop it and lose out on the $0.75 cent or whatever. That way, when the customer gets it, if they think it's LP, they're not going to question it. They're going to be like, cool. I got a better card than what I thought I was getting. So there's that. Um, that's the first thing is when you're selling your own stuff, make sure that you're grading it correctly and getting it out the door correctly. Uh, you don't want a bunch of returns because your stuff's damaged or not in the condition you say it is. So after that, you're going to be buying collections or from Facebook, uh, your friends, any of that. For me personally, my first collection bought was from a friend. He gave me a full list of it. I priced it out paid him it was mine for my second collection i bought right after i did buy off facebook marketplace it was a guy who got into commander but didn't like it so it was just dropping all of his stuff um i ended up buying the collection from him it was a good buy uh the problem was though for him he did not have a full deck list and all of that so when that happens you're gonna have to study a lot um, he told me the three pre-cons, and at the time, one of the pre-cons had Spawning Kraken, which had jumped to, like, almost 20 bucks at the time, and a couple other cards in it had jumped. Um, so I bought the collection from him. Turned out to be a very good buy for me, uh, because he also threw in a trade binder that, it didn't have nothing crazy in it, but it did have dollar, two dollar cards, a lot of them. Um, and it also had, uh, three booster boxes he had opened. He put them all into uh, their boxes and just left the stuff in there. Um, so, got to go through those and pull out the commons on commons that were worth some money. All the rares have been put in the trade binder. So, um, that's the next thing. When you're buying collections, you need to, one, either know what you're getting exactly, as I did with my first one, or you need to know, like, a broad... Not even broad. You want it to be like kind of nailed in. If somebody's trying to buy you a full collection and you're going to pay them 70% of TCG or anything like that, you need to know what's in the collection because anything under $3 should be counted as bulk. You cannot sell on TCG Direct without them taking half of the money. So why would you pay somebody 50% of the item or whatever percentage and then TCG taking half of it? It makes no sense for you. So that's something you need to look at is you need to make sure you know what you're getting 
before you make a complete offer. Now, for him, he did tell me they were three base pre-cons, and he gave me the deck list of two of the standard decks. He said there's two more standard decks. He doesn't have the deck list on. Um, but he gave me the deck list for the two standard decks. So once I had the pre-cons and the two standard decks, the amount of money he was asking, I was clearing barely. So I was going to clear it barely. But with three booster boxes worth of cards, a trade binder, and then two or three more standard decks, for me to start out, I was going to take that because I was trying to build out my inventory. And if I lose a little bit of money, I'd be fine, which I wouldn't have. I would have broke even. It would have just been a lot of work to go through the stuff. So that's the second thing. Make sure when you're buying something, you either have an exact list of what you're getting or you are buying at bulk pricing with a deep discount to keep it going. The next thing that you're going to look for is if you get into the bulk side of things. Uh, again, for bulk, you need to make sure that you are buying at cheaper rates and still be competitive with local stores around you that are buying bulk and things of that nature. But you need to be careful with it. For me, as you can see behind me there and there and then my wall, all this on the side. Um, that's all bulk I bought. I bought around, in total, I'm probably at 30,000 cards of bulk bought. Um, for me, I've been going through sorting it. I do try and post a set of bulk. Uh, I was doing it a day. Now I do it every three days um, because I've been buying actual collections, piecing those out, buying collections and posting them for, as I say, money cards. They're not all expensive or anything, but they're more than bulk. Um, my bulk goes up for 25 cent a piece. Uh, I am trying now anything that is under Ten cent gets listed for fifteen. Just on mine, in case anybody ever needs it. Anything around over the ten cent mark is probably going to twenty five cent. And then, of course, commons, uncommons that are over twenty five or more. Um, I'm starting on eBay now to do my bulk rares. See what I can do with those. Um, but that's what I do with most of my stuff. Anything that I have more than five of that's not worth twenty five cent or more. Uh, goes into my bolt bin and in that bin I make 100 card packs with those some rares and mythics and uh, Two four language cards and I sell them on my Mercari. So It's a cheap way to get rid of bulk. I think I sell a hundred cards for three to three fifty and it comes with um, You know a hundred cards five mythic rares Five mythic or rare, and then the foreign language cards can be any rarity. So technically, you could get up to seven. Um, and then 93 cards. That's what I do personally. Um, it floats my bulk that I have way too much of, gets it out, um, and I wind up making a little bit of money. I don't make any, of course, $3 for 100 For 1000 you're looking at around $30 um, for 1000 cards. Normally, you're paying roughly 6 for the commons, uncommons for 1000 Rare Mythic can go anywhere from 50, 60, 70. It just all depends on how you go about buying it there. So that's the other thing you have to watch out for is buying stuff and making sure that you're getting them at good rates, even on regular cards. You need to make sure you're getting them at good rates and you're not buying stuff that's highly volatile and is going to go up and go down just because it looks a little different. Um, those are the big things that you need to look out for. Again, just make sure you know the collections you're getting. Get them at a good price and make sure that everything you post is graded correctly. Um, that's the basics of it. I will mention on the Magic the Gathering on Facebook page, there's a lot of people that complain about TCG, how they buy products from TCG sellers and stuff. And they're like, oh, it came in damage, it's damage, it's damage. Please, for everybody that is going to buy from TCG, go and check their system um, that tells you what your cards are graded at. For most people, near mint means nothing wrong with it. Everything's great. That's not true for TCG. They have a set way of grading cards. A near mint card can have small blemishes. Um, LP can have more blemishes. And it goes down farther and farther. Once you get into heavily played or damaged or stuff, that's stupid. And probably you shouldn't be selling it unless it is a... $200 card and you're going to sell it damaged, but it's still worth a good amount. That's different. But if you're selling bulk or just regular cards, you definitely need to be trying to figure out where to accurately put them at. Um, and again, just check out TCG. They have a whole grading system that will help you 
That way you can list things accurately. And if you're a buyer, you're not going to be complaining that you got a damaged card when you really didn't. If you go by TCG standards, the card that you're saying, the corner is slightly white or something, you know, like at the very tip of it. And you're like, oh, this is damaged or this is MP or something. And to their standards, they could LP. And sometimes they let stuff slide that they say is near mint that is not. If I see a white corner of any amount, um, I do LP or yes, lightly played. I do lightly played. If it's anything more than that, I can start looking into going farther down into LP and then heavily played, but or MP. Uh, I only do that though again for cards that are over ten dollars. If it's anything else after that, I just keep it, put it in my own decks, which is what I've been doing. I play a lateral deck because it was one of the first pre cons I upgraded. Um, somebody sold me their lateral pre con. Again, the one that had spawning cracking in it. Um, I believe it was that one. Uh, but, no, it wasn't that one. It was one of the Strixhaven ones. Um, but, anyways, I took the last route that was damaged and put it in my deck, and I got rid of mine and sold it. I don't care if my cards are slightly damaged or slightly played. Once they go in a sleeve, as long as I can still read them perfectly fine and I can tell the pictures there, I'm not going to care. Now, there are some decks I bling out and I want them to look super nice. Those, on the other hand, I will take more care of what goes in there. But, like, the new Assassin's Creed had a propaganda reprint. It's 40 cent. The old propagandas, I don't know what they're up to now, but at one point they were two, three bucks, probably a little more. So, why not go for the Assassin's Creed propaganda at 40 cent and then sell off your other propagandas? If you like the arts and stuff, I can understand that. And the Assassin's Creed art does suck for that card. But overall, I'm fine with swapping them out. But anyways, those are the things to look for when starting out. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know if there's any other topics you would like for me to cover um, in the next two videos I have planned. Uh, this one's actually being made because I'm sick today. So I had to stay home running temperature. But the other two videos that'll be coming out, I'm open a collector's box of Bloomboro uh, this afternoon. I'll record it and post it. And then I will also be showing um, everything I used uh, to get started on TCG, such as packing, labels, uh, shipping materials, everything that I used, just all of it. I'll be showing that. So anyways, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed these videos. Peace out.